Hi, my name is Alex and welcome to this episode of Magic Missile Minis. Today we're going to be working on my Warhammer 40k Space Marine diorama uh, with the guy that's going to be jumping off of the motorcycle that we started a couple weeks ago. Today we're going to be making the actual base for the diorama as well as making a dead Space Marine that we're going to be adding on to add a little bit more interest to the diorama as a whole. So without further ado, let's get into the project. So here is the base that I'm going to be using for this diorama uh, for scale, just so you know how big it is. This is the size of the Space Marine that we built earlier. Um, so it's fairly large. Um, and so to make the actual terrain for it, I've taken this uh, cork, I think it's like a hot mat that I've just ripped up and uh, basically put into the shape that I'm looking the, for the terrain to be in, kind of loosely for now, attaching pieces together with wire that it is stabbed through it. Um, this piece here is where I'm going to be having the chaos guy. He's going to be chilling right here on um, this little angle bit there. And then I've got this other stack that I've um, made earlier, again, attached with wires uh, that has a little bit of a runway up here. So if I move this over here, um, this is where I'm going to have the motorcycle kind of blowing up and flipping over and then the Space Marine will be kind of flying through the air somewhere here. But to start the project, I think before I actually attach the models, I'm going to finish the entire base diorama itself um, and just kind of populate it a little bit. The Since we only have these two uh, figures in the diorama that aren't particularly large in the grand scheme of things, you can kind of see it here. Um, we've got all this space here that needs to be kind of filled with different points of interest. So I'm going to start with that and then later on we're going to go and add the uh, main figures for the diorama. So the first thing that I do is get rid of all these little round pieces on the edge to make sure that everything has the more uh, rough, uh, rough texture sorry, of the cork. Um, cork does a really good job of making a natural kind of stone uh, texture that is works really, really well for um, big chunks of terrain. And so I just take my pliers here and rip at the ends here and just kind of super loosely, not too worried about the exact shape. Um, as long as I get the general shape of what I'm looking for down, which isn't anything particular. Um, the main important bits are where these mo the main models are actually going to be resting. Um, and I'm making sure I'm actually keeping these extra little bits because they're going to come in handy later on uh, to really kind of mess with the shape of everything uh, later once we're adding some more like just texture paints and stuff like that. And of course, going to the other part of the model and doing the same thing, just taking the wires and ripping at the round, uh, softened edges. So with the actual terrain attached to the base, it was time to start working on the details. And one of the details I wanted to add was a uh, space marine who had just been like demolished or something like that by this uh, kind of sword arm from the chaos guy. Uh, so I found this, which is a old school space marine in uh, the bit box at my um, local Warhammer store. So I decided I was gonna rip this guy apart and use him as kind of like a dead space marine that's kind of just sitting here um, underneath the chaos daemon prince. Uh, so I start by basically ripping this uh, arm off and I'm not being too careful with it because I don't really, I don't really need to um, because since I'm just gonna have this uh, armor plating already like completely opened up. Um, so after doing a bunch of heavy trimming, I'm left with this. So I've ripped off both of the arms that were previously attached here, as well as gotten rid of the majority of the head. Since I wanted to replace that with a Primaris head, uh, one of these slightly newer heads that uh, go with the newer models to make it make more sense with the helmet that's on the belt of the other guy. 
Um, and then I also got rid of the arms that I'm gonna have in different positions that were on the base model itself. And as you can see, it's all done very, very loosely. I wasn't too concerned with um, making everything look perfect since the arm is gonna be broken. And I'm actually gonna have this uh, skeleton gonna, is gonna be kind of superimposed onto that in some shape or form to have it kind of look like he was burnt or something from a power sword and just his skeleton and the armor were left behind. I then go ahead and clean up all the different cuts we had made previously with the uh, pliers and just, just kind of smoothing them out so that I can uh, sculpt on them a little bit better and have a better sense of what's genuinely going on with uh, the model itself and where I need to be sculpting everything. So as I've been working on this guy and kind of removing more of the plastic, I decide what I'm going to do is as I'm kind of placing it onto the model, I'm going to get the leg and remove it a little bit and have it look a little bit like the skeleton's kind of falling out of the armor itself. So just again, using my pliers, not being too careful, I um, chop off the leg itself. Um, part of what I've been doing as I've been trimming is actually flattening out the legs here so they can sit a little bit flatter onto the uh, base itself. But then I just start removing some of these extra little details that I um, kind of destroyed a bit, uh, taking the model apart that aren't super important. Um, and once I've got the actual space marine parts where I like them, I start trimming at the skeleton itself. Um, so getting rid of this extra leg that I know won't be visible, um, as well as the larger joint here. Um, everything else needs a little bit more precision as I think about exactly where I want to cut this off and have it be sticking out of the space marine model itself. So I do that, carefully looking side by side with a X-Acto blade rather than just using the pliers themselves. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to follow the contours of the different um, uh, cuts that I've been making on the armor itself. And unfortunately, as I've been working on this, the uh, skeleton broke into two pieces. Uh, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm just gonna have to, have to attach that back together later. As I'm working on this, I'm just playing around with the placement and how far and how much of the skeleton I want to be in the armor and how much I want to be exposed. So I then take this femur bone that was left sticking out of the side here, cut that off, and then smoothing it out a little bit. Um, since I'm once that's smooth enough, I can attach it then to this leg here. And it's gonna be kind of sticking out, revealing a little bit of the bone, uh, but not too much of it. I also take some glue and add one of the little um, jetpack backpack things i don't think they're jetpacks they're power packs is what they're called onto the back of this guy to make sure that i've got all the different pieces of the space marine on him i then go ahead and add some glue onto the top of the skeleton spine here and reattach the head in a slightly more realistic pose as if it's kind of being thrown back just from the position that it's in I then take this extra arm and add a little bit of the plastic cement into the little to the little hole here and add the extra bit of bone that we cut off from the leg and stick it in there as if it's kind of um, been chopped off but there's a little bit that you can still see on there. So it'll match the rest of the model, kind of set a little bit to the side of where the Space Marine actually is though. 
also just taking an extra pauldron that I had from one of my older Space Marine sets and just attaching that onto that extra arm. Then take a couple of extra other pieces that I chopped off from other Space Marine bits to attach uh, together to make the second arm. Getting the forearm with the bit of armor and then taking some more of that extra skeleton and just sticking that into here um, to make a bit of a, a elbow joint. And with that finished, our Space Marine, who seems to have had a slightly rough go of it, is uh, ready to get some green stuff details added. Then taking some glue, I can attach that to the rest of the model itself. So the main details that we're adding here are going to be the damaged bits of armor that are kind of wrapping around the skeleton itself, smoothing out all the edges that we cut out of the plastic and making them make a little bit more sense. So this is primarily gonna be trying to make the green stuff just look like some folded and bent and cracking metal from this like weird laser sword that the the best way I've found to do this is to create a series of these little like triangles and squares that are kind of sticking out from the armor and then you kind of bend them up so trying to make them as flat as possible um, just um, against the actual model and then once you have these little like squares and little bits that are jutting out you bend them up and away from the model itself uh, and it kind of makes it look like they're warping out and they've been cracked and broken. I then take this pauldron from another conversion that I had used it for and I'm going to cut that up and so that I can add it to, as a kind of destroyed pauldron for this shoulder here. I then go around to the rest of the model and continue this process around all the different places with the armor. So now that I have this kind of destroyed pauldron, um, I can just simply scrape away at some of the details to make sure that it looks really nice but I don't even have to actually sculpt onto this. It already looks like it's destroyed and broken. So I'll just take a little bit of glue and I'm going to add it onto the model itself. As a final touch, I add a little bit more green stuff onto the um, broken uh, armor that we had sculpted before to try and mimic the warping of the uh, symbol on the Space Marine's chest, just to keep a little bit of continuity between the uh, broken material and the uh, rest of the armor and that'll help just blend everything together and avoid having the uh, green stuff just look like it's tacked onto the model and actually a part of the armor that's being torn up. Now, before I can start actually adding any of the models themselves, I have to uh, finish up filling in some of these gaps that are in the base itself. So taking these extra little cork bits that we had pulled off um, before when we were kind of editing the shape of this 
and just jamming them into the corners here because once I have uh, all the little extra cork bits where I want them, I'm gonna cover them in a bunch of white glue. This white glue is gonna help act as just a bit of a sealant and make sure that they're all solidly in place. I apply the white glue by just using an old kind of mangled brush that I don't really care about too much since the glue can ruin brushes fairly, dis fairly quickly. I then continue this process around the rest of the model. But one thing I did realize was uh, as I was applying the glue, is that rather than just leaving the glue as it is, watering down the glue a little bit helped a lot in the application of the glue and made sure that the bits of cork that I was adding wouldn't stick to my brush and stick to the glue rather than stay where I had placed them. Now with all of the cork pieces added, I can start uh, gluing on all of these other pieces that we created for the base. And I just attach these with a little bit of super glue. I also take this helmet from the old mini that we had taken apart. I just kind of liked how it had clipped off when we were just, I wasn't planning on keeping it, but it kind of clipped off in a cool way. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of glue to that and set that down farther on the cliff a little bit to make it look like it's kind of rolled all the way down here whenever he was chopped in half. So with that detail added, I think that's where we're gonna leave this video for now and continue this project in a part three. I was hoping to have the project done in this video. I mentioned it in the last video on this project, but unfortunately, uh, this is the amount of progress I've made in two weeks. And as you can tell, we're nowhere near finished. Next week, however, I think I'm probably gonna make a different project just to give myself a little bit of a break from it, and then we'll dive back in the week after that, hopefully. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe for more content, and hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And if you have any questions about conversions or miniature sculpting, leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any video suggestions, you can also leave those in the comments. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.